Got it. And let's share screen. Okay, here we go. Um, hi, humans. Uh, this is a talk I'm going to give on the Huan or the ethereal soul. Um, you know, the five spirits are so interesting. And when I went to school, we had to memorize, oh, the liver has the Huan and the heart has the Shen and so forth. But there was never any discussion of any of them except the Shen. Um, or if there was discussion, it was kind of new age and people were making up stuff. So at some point recently, I just decided because, as I think you know, I translate things. I decided to go look in the old books and to see what I could find in the old, mainly medical books about the Hun. Of course, if you go into Taoism and other things like that, there's you know going to be stuff. But I was specifically interested in the medicine, and so this talk comes from that research. Um, so let's see. Um, even though even though I'm mostly going to be talking about medical books, we still have to start with a little background because the doctors who wrote those medical books, you know, referred also to some earlier works. For example, Zhuangzi, who's a, a, it's an amazing book that is like Warren State's period. He's called a Taoist, although he wouldn't have called himself a Taoist. And, you know, if you haven't read Zhuangzi, you should at least read parts of it. And so one sentence within Zhuangzi is that when you're asleep, the Huan meets with things, but when you're awake, the body operates. So, you know, in sleep, your body is just lying there, but your Huan is going out and doing all of these amazing things in your dreams. Um, so that's just like a little quote to start with, but, you know, why is this relevant? Is this just all like really esoteric stuff with no relevance to our patients? I don't think so, because we have patients with sleep pathologies and with like changes in consciousness that are maybe pathological, and some of these can involve the Huan. So, you know, excessive dreaming or dream disturbed sleep, since the Hun is your dream spirit, the Hun is what's doing the dreaming, then if the Hun is somewhat disturbed, you might have dream disturbed sleep, even though it's relatively normal dreams. But dreams can get really scary and intense and also and nightmarish, but also there's this, um, you know, sometimes there's a feeling of evil beings in the same room and pressing on your chest and so forth, kind of somewhat parallel to sleep paralysis in modern medicine. And I did give a talk about this some months ago, which you can, if you look on my YouTube channel, you can find the talk about um, ghost oppression dreams. Um, of course, there's also insomnia. If you're having horrible, scary dreams, you may not be able to sleep. Um, so, you know, these are sleep pathologies. In addition, sometimes people have altered states of consciousness while they're awake um, and not because of recreational um, drugs or anything like that. Um, so we'll see some case studies with that kind of thing. Out of body experience, the Huan can kind of leave the body and and, you know, do things even outside of dreams. And in addition, when the Hun is unhappy, that means the liver's unhappy. And when the liver's unhappy, you may have problems with the sinews, the eyes, the genitals, and liver function like storing blood or the so-called smooth flow of qi, which in Chinese is more like coursing and discharging qi, because this is you know, an aspect of liver pathology. So um, I'm going to do a little bit more background stuff. Um, okay, this is uh, Ling Xu chapter 43. And, you know, Ling Xu can be really hard to understand. And this is me trying to translate a book that's way past, way earlier than my time period that I tend to, you know, hang out in. But in any case, it says... Normal evils attack from the outside. So that's talking about normal wind, cold, damp heat, summer heat, dryness. Um, but 
they don't have a fixed home once they get inside the body. So they pollute the zang, the yin organs, and they don't have a fixed place. It's not like they're just in the liver or just in the heart or just in the spleen. Um, so they move with yin and wei. So that means I guess they can circulate through the channel system if they're moving with yin and they can go out to the skin with wei qi and they fly up with the huan and the po. Um, this prevents people from having peaceful sleep and makes them tend to dream too much. So this is actually saying a disturbance of the huan could in part be due to external attack. That's kind of not what I would have thought, but we'll see a case or two that does involve that as part of it. So Chao Yuan Fang um, was like the chief editor of a book called Jubing Yuan Ho Lun, which is this Sui Dynasty Encyclopedia of Diseases. And um, it really goes over like every known disease at that time period. Um, it's a pretty famous book to research, but it's not so famous for practitioners because he doesn't generally offer treatment. Um, suggestions. In any case, in talking in 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 this Jubing Yuan Hao Lun, he says when someone has a feeble Huan and fall, they can be violated by ghost chi. They tend to obtain this ghost chi on the road outside of their home. So this brings up one of the things we're going to find throughout is that um disturbances of the Hun generally have a deficiency aspect. They can also have certainly excess things going on, but when they're feeble, when they're unnourished, that's when there tends to be problems. And so any of these kinds of things, even if they're big, you know, scary symptoms, there's an underlying deficiency as part of it. We're going to be talking about that. And so, you know, here in the Sui dynasty, they were worrying about like when the Hun is weak, you know, ghosts can come in. Um, the word ghost in Chinese means more than just spirits of dead people. It can also be, um, you know, something that was never human. Um, so demon is sometimes also used for this. Um, but the idea is that, um, let's say, if your liver is deficient, then the hun is not well anchored, so the hun is kind of floating, and then something can take its place. And um, that something could be a ghost, according to Chao Yun Fang. Um, later, for things like insanity and, and so forth, we talk about phlegm. Um, so the shen is, you know, the heart is deficient, the shen is kind of floating, and then phlegm can fill that place and make the person, you know, what we would call psychotic today. Um, so there's, you know, both for the shen and the hun, there's this idea that there's often a deficiency that doesn't anchor the Shen or the Hun, so they're floating, and then something bad, whether it's a ghost or whether it's phlegm, can take its place and cause problems. Mm, so Sun Tzu Miao, um, famous, famous Tang Dynasty doctor says, someone with evil crying, that's a weird phrase, evil crying, but that's literally what it says. Someone who has evil crying, it unsettles the one in the pole, and so they're going to have decreased blood and chi. Again, here's this idea of deficiency um, that you know comes first before the one problem. A person with decreased chi mm -hmm. is like a heart issue, heart mind shen issue. Someone with heart chi deficiency will be fearful. They'll close their eyes and want to sleep, but they dream of distant traveling until their jing and their shen are scattered about and their hun and their po, po travel recklessly. So, you know, the heart governs the five spirits. And so, you know, I guess when the heart isn't doing its job governing, then the hun and the po can also, you know, be unanchored and, and chaotic and so forth. Um, and Sun Tzu Miao also says in a different section, the five zong are the residents of the Hun and the Po and their support for Jing and Shen. 
when the Hun and Fu fly upward, the five Zhang are left empty. So an evil Shen can take up residence in them. A ghost made by supernatural being made by a supernatural being descends into them. So again, we can see there's first the Hun and the Po leave, maybe because there's a deficiency, so they're not anchored, and then something else bad can take their place. And I think this is important for us to understand. Um, you know, like maybe if we're dealing with certain sleep issues or certain changes in consciousness, certain so-called psychoses and so forth. When the pulse is short and minute, um, then the zang are deficient. The hun and the po are unsettled. The hun belongs to the liver and the po belongs to the lungs. Okay, we knew that. Moving forward in time, I'll stop for questions in a minute or two, um, but a few more slides. Um, you know, this is all like introductory stuff to give us like the big picture. And so Lei Jing was written by Zhang Jiebin, famous, famous Ming Dynasty doctor. It's a commentary on all of Nei Jing, Ling Xu, and Su Wen. And so this is a commentary on Ling Xu chapter eight. Um, and in Ling Xu chapter eight, there's a very famous sentence that says the Hun follows the coming and going of Shen. And so he asked, what does that mean? <laughs> um, you know, the Huan follows the coming and going of the Shen. And he says, the nature of the Shen is bright and clear. Both brightness and clearness are in the category of intelligence and a quick mind. But the language of the Huan is dreams or, or trance states, all in a realm of fluctuations and wandering. So what I usually say in my basic theories class or fundamentals class when I'm explaining this, it's like the Shen is your normal daytime consciousness where we have an agreed upon reality or at least a relatively agreed upon reality that it's, you know, 615, 617, whatever, that the sky is blue, that, you know, that kind of everyday reality is at least a large part of what the Shen gives us. But the Hun is this dream state or trance state um, where you don't have to follow the laws of physics. You know, in my dreams, I can fly, but in my daytime Shen consciousness, I'm not able to fly. Um, so I really like this dreams or trance states, a realm of fluctuations and wanderings. And so if somebody's kind of in a dreamlike state, um, even though they're awake, we have to think of the Hun. Um, so he says, Shen is stored by the heart. So when the heart is quiet, the Shen is clear. But the Hun follows the Shen. That's that sentence from Ling Shu A. The Hun follows the Shen. So if the Shen gets out of whack, if it's dim or confused, the Hun then also is unanchored or unmoored and unrestrained. And so their consciousness becomes wild. And so that's the Hun following the Shen. Mm. Then uh, is this from a different? No, it's from the same section. Okay. Um, one does things in dreams, but the body doesn't move. The body doesn't respond. Even, you know, in a dream, you could be eating dinner, but your body is just lying still. The body doesn't respond. This is the movement and stillness of the Hun in the Po. It is the movement of the Hun because the Hun is doing all these things, but the stillness of the Po, the corporeal soul. So my body is still, but my Hun is out doing things and moving. Mm. Okay, so that's my little introduction of what people some people had to say about the Huan. Obviously, it involves the Shen and the Po at the same time, talking about all three. But, um, you know, my focus is on the Huan. So any questions, comments so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. I'm sorry. I can't see if anyone else's hand is up. So go ahead. Um, I didn't. I hope I'm not talking over anyone. Um, so uh, I was interested in um, the definition of ghost or demon that you gave. 
um, particularly the reference to something that was never human. Um, like I've read stuff like the the Shadow Book of Ji Yun and stuff like that. Like, is that the kind Love of it. thing we're talking about? Yes, although if we had the Chinese for that in front of us, sometimes they might say ghosts and sometimes they might say other, there are other words um, and sometimes they might use Hun or Shen, you know, a Shen can be a being outside of you. Usually a Shen is good, but not always, um, you know, so, so yeah, in all those Tales of the Strange, there are many, you know, it, it's like a whole genre, Tales of the Strange. Right right and so there's a number of them translated into english and um so the word ghost would be used sometimes for things that were never human at the end if there's time i could look in crawl's dictionary and see all the meanings of way but you know it it's going to be more than just the literal spirit of a dead person that didn't pass on to the next stage for well, sure i i think what i'm trying to get at is like if I'm trying to sort of glean what I can from um, stuff like what Sun Samya has written here and and apply it to the context that I'm working in, like I feel like I kind of need a an understanding of the sort of mythological symbolic vocabulary that they're working with. Because I mean, obviously I'm not gonna be, I mean, no, no tea, no shade on anybody else who's doing demonology, but like I'm not personally going to be thinking of it as like a literal, you know, thing from beyond the whatever. Like, so I'm sorry. So, so I guess I'm trying to get an idea of like where I might search for, you know, the the wider sort of like Joseph Campbelly vocabulary here. Um, so actually, I did another one of these on ghosts in Chinese medicine um, oh. that's on the YouTube oh. channel. Well, so, how convenient. Yeah, so that may answer some of the questions, but we can always have a conversation in the future more about ghosts. But, uh, you know, we can get too far away or, oh, or go sure. back to yeah. things I've already done. So like you and I can have conversation later in more detail, if that's OK. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, but yeah, like I was surprised because you always hear that way being translated as ghost, but it does yeah. have a broader meaning than ghost in English. Um, well, in English, we have the ghost of Christmas past and so forth, which is not a, a dead human. So I guess it's sometimes used differently in English, but not so much. Um, okay, anything else, anyone? Okay, so I love cases. There is another question. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I can't always see who's, so please speak whoever has a question. Um, sure, um, thank you, by the way. And Hi. Uh, my question is regarding, um, you talked a little bit about the hun being in the dream state. Is it also present in the meditative state? You know, that would be more of a question for like researching into Taoist texts. I see. Okay. Because I really tried to research into the pathology of it. And, and um, I do personally think, although I don't have all the texts to back it up, that if somebody's a shaman, they're accessing their hun to go off in their trance state and do things. And, and you know, I, I think they're different meditative states. So some of them may certainly... You know, if a meditative state is the same as a trance state or a different, you know, so I definitely think there are people who can use their one in a positive way and have some control over it or some ability to direct it. Um, but I, that's like I was looking more into pathology. So that's a good question. That's a good area of research. Yeah. Um, anything else? Okay, so I love case studies. 
Um, if you've gone to other sessions of this, I generally have a lot of case studies. And this case study I found some years ago, and it's just like, wow, this is a pretty amazing case. It's a long one, though. So this is from somebody named Xu Xu Wei, who was this Southern Song Dynasty doctor. He wrote a bunch of books, and one of them is Puji Ban Chir Fang. Um, and uh, he was... Well, we don't care about who he was. Let's not take time for that. Um, so in 1133, I, Xu Xu Wei, um, stayed someplace and met a person named Dong Sheng, who kind of had a strange chi about him. <laughs> Um, so every time he lay down, his hun flew upward. He could feel himself in the bed, but his hun and his shen left the body. He had fright palpitations and frequent ghost oppression. I have a slide about ghost oppression on the next slide. Um, so he had these like really bad nightmarish kind of experiences and palpitations. And so he couldn't sleep at night because he was afraid to go to sleep. He had seen several doctors, but none of them had been able to help him. So I examined him and I asked, well, what did the other doctors say it was? And so before we find out what the other doctors say, in case you didn't you know, go to the lecture on ghost oppressive dreams, then you know, this slide kind of explains it, but basically the ghost radical is at the bottom of this character and the top part of the character pretty much means to press. Um, and people with ghost oppression often, you know, have what today is called sleep paralysis um, and often feel as if something evil is pressing on their chest and they like feel there's something evil in the room, but they can't wake up, they can't yell, they can't move. And this is, you know, something that, you know, there's also another video on my YouTube channel about ghost depression dreams. So in any case, this patient, you know, had like, you know, his twin was flying up and he was having this ghost oppression. And so what did the other doctors say the problem was? All of them thought it was a shen, a heart problem. And so I, Xu Xu Wei, I said, gee, but your pulse is a liver pulse. Um, liver has received an evil. It's not heart, it's liver. Mm. Evil chi took advantage of deficiency. Here again is that idea that we're going to consistently find is first there's deficiency and that makes the empty space for the evils to come in. And they attack the liver channel. The liver stores the hun. So it like had this disease mutation and became a wandering hun instead of being stable and anchored. Now it's floating and wandering. The liver of a healthy person won't receive an evil. So when they lay down to sleep, the hun can come back to the liver and the shen is quiet and they sleep well. But in your case, the liver has this evil. So the hun is like floating and can't come back home. And because of this, when you lay down, the hun flies up as if it wants to separate from the body. The liver governs anger. So when you're angry, this gets worse. And Dong happily said, I never heard of this. Even though you haven't given me herbs yet, I already feel that you've got me. <laughs> you understand me. So I would really like you to give me some herbs. And the doctor said, sir, for the time being, just, you know, have faith that like, I've, I've got the right idea. I'm on the right track, but I don't have a treatment yet. I need to confer with other doctors and I need to find a, what formula we can use for this. It's like, I've never seen this before. So I understand what it is, but I need to go look for a treatment. So hold on, I'll be back. And after 10 days, I returned and said, oh, I've talked to so many doctors and I've looked through all kinds of formula books, but none of them talk about this. So I had to write my own formulas. And um, so he had two formulas that he gave this person and Dong took them for a month and the disease was completely eliminated. So that's the case, but let's talk about the theory some more and the formulas. This is still Xu Shu Wei talking. And he says, 
generally speaking, this formula, which we're going to see below, which is called Jenju Wan, um, uses mother of pearl. There's some question about this, but it does say what today we would call mother of pearl. Jenju is pearl and Mu is mother. Um, so this uses Jenju Mu as the sovereign and Longchu, which is like Longu, but it's the dragon's teeth to assist it. Jenju Mu is the number one herb to enter the liver channel. And these dragon teeth, Longchu, is in the same category with the liver. Modern people say Longchu and Hu Jing which is a kind of stone that's not in any Materia Medica that I can find. But modern books list these two, you know, mineral things. Longchu dragon's teeth are fossilized bones and Hu Jing is a stone. These are, you know, modern books in his time used them as herbs to shuttle, settle the heart. But actually Longchu calms the Hun and Hu Jing um, stabilizes the Po. And then this sentence is a little hard to translate, but what it means is that the Hu of Hu Jing is um, tiger and tiger is east and east is liver. And that the um, long, I'm sorry, tiger is west. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Tiger is west and west is lungs and po and long long is a dragon and the dragon is east and the hun. And so he's saying that these herbs are named after, you know, their correspondences. So here he explains, yeah, the east is the green dragon, you know, Qinglong, like Xiao Qinglong Tang and, and so forth. The east is a green dragon and wood, belongs to the liver, which stores the hun. The west is the white tiger, baihu, like baihu tang and so forth. Metal belongs to the lungs, which store the po. And so therefore the long treats the liver and the hu jing treats the po. Um, that's what he's saying. And then he says, look at the nature of dragons. Dragons mutate and transform and fly around and do things. So the hun also wanders and can become unstable. But tigers can focus attention and be still when they're stalking something. Um, so the Po stops and conserves. And so I say, to treat the Po when it's not peaceful, use this Hu Jing, which is tiger's eye, to treat the, and to treat the Hun when it flies upward, use the dragon's teeth. Mm, this is like a principle that everything embodies, but people don't really understand it. And so then he has formula. Here's this Jenju one, which is the main formula. It treats liver channel um, when it internally contracts wind evils due to deficiency. So when lying down, the person's one scatters and is not conserved and is not guarded. And the patient's complaint is fright palpitations. And then there's a note there the Jenju Mu is bigger than ordinary pearls. They're not the same thing. Here's the actual recipe. And then, but he says for Jenju Mu, the mother of pearl thing, he, here he says pearls that have not been drilled. And so there's some question of what is this Jenju Mu, but I think pearls or mother of pearl would probably be okay. So, you have access to the slideshow. If you're at Emperor's College, it's been uploaded there. But if you're not at Emperor's College, then it will be uploaded on academia.com in my account. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'll put a link to that. So, you know, I, I'm going to, you can see the formula because you can get the slideshow. So we don't have to like talk about it overly. You can look at it later. But what I like here, is most of this formula we could use today. We could use, you know, pearls and we could use Dangui and Shu Di and Jinsing and Xuanzi Ren and Baizu Ren. The only thing here we really can't use is Shi Jiao, which is, you know, rhinoceros horn to clear heat, but you could substitute something else for it or just leave it out. 
um, and you know it has the dragon's teeth and so forth. So this is mostly usable with like some um, modification. It wants you to finely powder the above and make um, honey pills um, at this size of pill. And then it does want you to coat them with cinnabar or jusha, which again, not legal in California. Um, I do know somebody who um, does use it in pills, um, although he's not in California and like he hasn't died from it yet. <laughs> so, but I think we're not going to be using this. Um, so each dose is 40 or 50 pills. That's a lot. Um, swallowed with a decoction of Jin Yin Hua and Bo Ha. So he mentioned wind, you know, and these are anti wind herbs and take them every day at midnight while lying down. So interesting recipe. You could play with it with a little modification. His second recipe for this, he doesn't say anything about it. He doesn't say what this treats and how is this any different than the other recipe. It's the herbs are quite different. Um, you know, you can look um, all of the herbs that are here, we could use. Um, Qixin, you know, is a little bit, you have to be careful that you just get the roots and not the leaves, but um, he says, remove the leaves. They knew back then that you shouldn't take the leaves of Shishin. But anyway, um, so he doesn't say anything about this formula except how to make it. Of course, powder, um, boil in water with some ginger and a may, the plum thing, um, take as needed. Okay, so there's that case, which I thought was so interesting. Um, you know, if I went too fast, you can look through the slideshow if it interests you and read it more slowly on your own. Any questions or comments? Okay. Um, and if I ever don't see you, just turn on your mic and say something. Nothing? Yeah, just okay. super quick. Uh, sorry, did somebody else want to go? Uh, yeah, you can go first. Okay. It's very quick. Um, so as far as the academia link, yeah, um, is that gonna? Because a lot of times I go on academia for things and it's paywalled. So is there? Mine is. I'm. I'm all power to the people. Mine's all free, okay. as far as I know. Nobody's ever complained about a paywall. If there, nice. if you find a paywall, email me. Sweet. I think Thank my email's so on the cover slide. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. Of course. Who else? Someone else wanted to say something. Uh, yes, I, Dr. Uh, uh, Wilkos, I have a question. So you mentioned that when spilled uh, sun, they are they the, are they, are they the same? That like when no. spilled and sun, they, uh, are they the same? That like spilled. The shen is, yeah. resides in the heart and the hun resides in the liver. Okay. Um, and the shen is like your daytime normal consciousness. And the hun is like your dream consciousness. But of course you can have, you know, bad dreams and problems with your dream consciousness. So there, the hun is the big boss of all five spirits. But so it's the boss, the Shen is the boss. I don't know if I said that wrong. The Shen is the boss of all five spirits. Um, so it's the boss of the Hun, um, but they are somewhat different. They have, you know, one's on the day shift and the other's on the night shift. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, sure. And anyone else? Yeah, I have a question. So if you are going to treat it with acupuncture, how would you approach? Um. You know, actually, I don't think I have any discussion of acupuncture here. Um, of course, he you know, there's. The I'm sorry. He gives you the treatment principle, though. Yeah, the treatment principle. Of course, there's Hun Men, which is, you know, what is it? UB 46, UB 47, 47, um, in theory, would treat the Hun and then liver points. You know, if if it's the liver is deficient, then the UN point of the liver is liver three, Tai Chong, and 
the back shoe point of the liver would supplement, you know, gun shoe, you'd be 18. So, you know, you'd start with that kind of stuff and maybe calming the shen at the same time, but you need to fill in the deficiency as well. Um, in the one on um, ghost oppressive dreams, I think I have some points listed. Um, so in this other video, and those would be kind of similar um, idea. It almost, it, it's really interesting to me the way that they're talking about these sort of invasions, capital uh, taking advantage of a deficiency almost sounds like kind of an emotional version of like a B syndrome kind of. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah. It's um, the same principle. Oh, or even, you know, somebody who has way cheap deficiency gets invasion. Yeah. That's yeah, really, it's the same principle. That's really cool. Yeah. Emily, you have your hand up. Yes, hi, Dr. Wilcox. Um, I'm just curious, were those formulas to remove the ghost and also nourish the liver? And then my second question would be, could we just take formulas to nourish the liver? Or does some, are these sort of addressing something being removed, for example, the ghost or the invading? Well, of course, you could take formulas to nourish the liver would be beneficial. But remember, he the this doctor likes long chur um, or long goo. You could use long goo. Um, and he doesn't even put hu jing in here because it's not a po problem. And he has the genju or some kind of pearl related thing. So you could start with um, even long goo muli. Muli is not you know, Genju Mu, but it's, you know, at least in that kind of category. We have, you know, nourished blood, nourished chi, calm, you know, the Shen or some aspect of spirit, clear heat, but only one clear heat herb. Um, Chen Shang is, a, you know, aromatic herb that um, moves chi, but it, it probably has some orifice opening ability. Um, so that's kind of what this formula is. The other formula that he has, has more anti-wind herbs. You can see there's anti-wind herbs here. So I guess that's what the other formula is for against the, the wind or the evils that are in the liver. So it is addressing that something's in the liver. So if you were to just take a liver, uh, nourishing formula it wouldn't actually get rid of the invasion um it would just supplement you know, the deficiency i don't have clinical experience with this so i can't really answer but like you don't want to nourish the evil thing so you probably want to try and get rid of the evil thing first or primarily and nourish the liver secondly and anchor the hun you know yeah um yeah, so right. i don't have clinical experience but you know we just have to kind of use our knowledge with kind of the ideas that i'm adding from these doctors it's like i have a so many i have like 13 14 case studies in this and i think between them we can data mine them to kind of try and get the idea of like how would we approach this and there are different approaches throughout this slideshow so um you know you may need different approaches for different situations or you may resonate with a certain approach more than others yeah thank you that's interesting to think about anything else okay so let's look at some more cases um okay so someone felt his own body split in two. Both were lying there together. He couldn't tell which was the real one and which was the false one. Mm. Um, so you can see this isn't a sleep thing. This is a, you know, like altered state of consciousness. <laughs> he didn't, um, what? Uh, he didn't speak and when questioned, he didn't answer. This was the hun separating from his body. So one of the, He's perceived himself as two. One of them was his real self, and one of them was his hun, which was separated. So they boiled jusha cinnabar. So, um, you know, we're always told you shouldn't heat cinnabar because that will make the mercury within it more available. 
Um, you know, and so this sounds odd, but we'll come across another where they also boiled jusha. So I think it's not a typo or anything. Uh, like I wondered at first if they just meant to boil the ginseng and fooling and then add the jusha and they just kind of blurred it all together. But there's another one where you're definitely boiling jusha. So I don't know, but we're not supposed to be taking cinnabar orally. Anyway, so besides the cinnabar, there's ginseng and fooling, make a thick decoction. He took it. And the chi of his true body became bright again and his false body dis dissolved or disappeared. So here, the ginseng and fooling are going to help strengthen his body and the jusha is going to help work with more the shen than the hun. But the shen is the boss of the hun, so maybe that's how this one works. Well, another case from Mingyi Lei'an, which is um, famous doctors categorized cases. So these are cases from all kinds, it's like a anthology, is that the right word? A collection of cases from famous doctors organized by topic is what this book is. I really like this book a lot. So some important guy suddenly had a bunch of bad dreams at night. As soon as he put his head on his pillow, the dreams would come flowing nonstop throughout the night. Later, he, he was appointed to an office and he was traveling to get to his new post. And he passed through some city where he met a judge named Hu. Um, they spent the night together in a courier station because they were traveling the same way. So, you know, they hung out and talked and Chen told of his many dreams, worried that it was inauspicious. He's starting a new post, but he's having all these bad dreams. He thought maybe it's a bad omen. But who, Judge Hu said, I was like that in the past. I had extreme dread, but I met a Taoist who told me to wear Jusha Cinnabar. Um, and when I was first appointed as a judge for Chen Zhou, I looked for this thing, which I, it's Lingsha dual arrowhead. So Lingsha is another name for cinnabar. Dansha is another name for cinnabar. There's so many names for cinnabar, but it's some kind of talisman. So he, you know, when he went to some place, he looked for a certain talisman made out of cinnabar and wore it. It was effective in less than 10 days. I haven't had these dreams again in four or five years. Also, I haven't told anyone until now. So here's something, you know, you may say, gee, I wish we could use cinnabar, but actually, okay, maybe you could use it as a talisman. There's no problem, like internal use, not legal in California, um, but to like have a talisman made out of cinnabar, you could do that. Let's see what happened. He undid his man bun. You know how in the Ming Dynasty they had the bun on the top of his head. Um, and that's the, that's the technical term, Dr. Wilcox? I think so. It must be. Um, so, and he, so in his bun, he had this talisman wrapped in gauze. And he gave it to the other guy who had no more dreams at night. After that, his shen and his horn were quiet. And so various books often record that Jusha wards off malignity, like evil stuff. And it is truly so. So that's a story from a book called Le Bien, We Don't Care. But the commentator in, there, in Mingyi Leon, then somebody wrote commentary. And the commentary states, dreams are continuations. What you think about in the daytime is, is continued in your dreams at night. A realized person, like somebody, it's not the same as enlightened, but it's that kind of idea. Somebody who's achieved a certain level has no dreams because they have emptiness, indifference to fame, few thoughts and scant worries. So what dreams would they have? And then that brings me to, you know, he's quoting dreams are continuations. What one thinks about in the daytime is what dreams it what one dreams about at night, that's actually, he's quoting from old books. So in another so-called Taoist um, old book called Lidze, um, then it says what one thinks about in the daytime is what one dreams about at night. Lidze also says, 
true persons, which is genren, which is this like, it's kind of a Taoist term that implies somebody's gotten to a certain level of achievement mentally or whatever. <laughs> true persons of ancient times forgot themselves when awake and their sleep had no dreams. And Huainanza, a Han Dynasty book says, true persons, and it goes on and on, but then the part we care about, their sleep has no dreams. Their wisdom has no sprouts. Their po, the um, corporeal soul, has no restraints, and their hun does not fly up. And Zhuangzi, who we met at the very beginning, he's talking about the sages. Their sleep has no dreams. Their waking time has no worries. Their shen is simple and pure. Their hun is not weary. So those are some clues. How do we get peaceful sleep? Well, we have to become sages or genren. <laughs> um, and, you know, to some degree, we have to make our consciousness in the daytime calm and peaceful if we want to have peaceful sleep at night. So I put these quotes here because the previous case was quoting from some of this kind of stuff. This is a pretty common theme. Um, any questions or comments up to this point? Uh, what does it mean that wisdom has no sprouts? Their wisdom has no sprouts. That you pick the one thing that is like, I'm trying to translate this and I'm looking Sorry. in every single dictionary to find out like what other meanings could this, you know, it's essential meaning is sprout. Um, and I couldn't find any other meaning that like oh. really made sense. But I think it's like focused. It's not like, shh, shh, you know, sprouting uh. off in every direction is my guess, but I could be very wrong. Maybe because a I'm reference not to like the movements of the emotional chi, like they talk about in Suwin 39. Maybe, could be. That kind of, that kind of brings me to my next thing, which is like, what exactly are we talking about when we talk about the Hun flying up? Like, what is that in the Qi dynamic? Well, of course, liver Qi moves up. And so, okay. I was wondering you know, the relationship there. Yeah, I, I mean, and anger makes Qi rise. So we saw, and we'll see again, where they said when the person gets angry, it gets worse. Um, and the Hun is ethereal. It goes up to the heavens after we die. Um, okay. so, but it should be, and it goes and flies around when we're dreaming, but it should be anchored and attached and easily come back. And here it seems to be flying up and wandering and not coming back when it should. Um, but you know, to really, I, I can't answer in a big theoretical way. I think when we look at the sum of all of these cases, we get the picture of what is meant by the symptoms and so forth. I, I mean, I think these cases are something I could continue to study and continue to get more understanding out of it the more I, you know, go over them again and try and make connections. So I don't have all the answers, but like, this information is something, you know, the is like the basis that we can start building an understanding from. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, anyone else? So another case by Gong Ting Xian, who's a Ming Dynasty doctor. So some famous person, some important person had deficiency detriment, which means like not just deficiency, but it's like pretty severe. Um, apparently deficiency is first stage, detriment is second stage and taxation is like the worst stage of deficiency, right? So this is like pretty serious deficiency. He didn't dare close his eyes. When he closed them, his shen and his hun drifted away and he was not conscious of anything. Furthermore, he didn't dare to speak. When he spoke, he couldn't catch his breath. He never thought of food and drink. He was almost in a stupor. So I, who is this? Gong Ting Xian. I diagnosed his six pulses, you know, three pulses on each side. They were deficient and minute. This was deficiency of original qi with deficiency detriment of the heart shen. So this original qi, hold on a second and I'll talk about it when we get to the formula. 
So I first used a dose of Jusha one. So I don't know the recipe in his book. He doesn't have the recipe for this, but since Jusha cinnabar is in the name, then this is probably a formula with lots of minerals that we can't take today. So he first used a dose of that, and then the patient was a little better. And then he used Bujang Ichitang, which of course is a very famous formula, you know, with some modifications. He took several doses of it and was gradually able to recover. So Bujang Ichitang was written by Li Dong Yuan, and um, Li Dong Yuan used this term original qi, which is different than source qi. And original qi, Li Dong Yuan seems to use it kind of as equivalent to post heaven qi. Okay, so he had post heaven qi deficiency and used Bujang Ichitang, um, which makes sense. Um, so that's that case. Okay, case number five. So Ye Tenshir um, is a Qing dynasty famous doctor, and he always thought differently. He always had different ideas. Um, and so here's a case of summer, late in summer heat. So he got um, summer heat, but it kind of sunk into his body and hid in his body and it hadn't really emerged yet. And when he went to sleep, a deafening sound arose in his heart mind and he felt his shen and his hun become dim and misty. And so Yang Chi was rushing upward, making internal wind. And then he kind of fainted as a result. Um, and so <clears throat> the formula for this is a modified Bible tongue. Um, okay. Uh, Ye Tin sure is really interesting, but his form, uh, it, these two cases aren't really that great um, for today, tonight's thing. And somebody else, um, when he got angry, um, he had fever and chills and sweating and palpitations and then he felt his shen and his huan scatter and leap upward. Um, the liver stores the huan, but when angry, the yang of the liver stores, stirs, stirs, not stores. And so this was yang stirring and becoming internal wind, which became fainting type stuff. Um, so it's associated with the liver, he sang. Um, and here's the formula, but the reason why I have this, I love this last little commentary paragraph. The liver as a government official is the military general. It tends to fight with the other organs. And this is really clever in Chinese because liver is pronounced gan and this word fight is pronounced gan. And if you look at the right side of the liver character, it's the same as the whole character for fight. So it's a visual pun, and it also is a sound pun, gan. Um, so it's really good in Chinese. In English, it takes too much explanation. Um, so anyway, um, one should know as soon as liver qi counterflows, all qi counterflows. And when qi counterflows, phlegm is engendered, and all this other stuff happens. The shen becomes lost, and the hun is dislodged. Anything can happen. So, okay. Um, another case or two, and then I'll ask for questions again. Okay. Um, somebody treated somebody's second son who was 17 years old. Every time he had wind damage, which means external wind invasion, um, but this is weird. Um, okay. So he's, He's talking about external wind invasion, but every time that happened, he vomited blood and had dream emissions. He had nocturnal emissions, nocturnal, you know, wet dreams. Um, this was latent fire in the liver. When fire stirred, it summoned wind. It called the wind. Liver is the site that stores blood and stores the hood. So when the liver doesn't store blood, then blood follows the flare up of fire because he was vomiting blood. So the blood that the liver should have stored was like flaring up with the fire. When the one is not tranquil, 
Jing follows dreams and discharges. Remember that the Hun is the dream spirit, even though we frequently talk about the Shen as far as dreams go. But the Hun has to do with dreams too. And so he's saying that the semen or the Jing follows the dreams and discharges. And so this is the last formula I'd think of for such symptoms, but he gave greater tongue but added Longu and Muli to weigh down the Hun and the Shen. And after four doses, the exterior was resolved and the bleeding had stopped. Isn't that a weird case? I, oh, and then he talks about a Guizhou Tang, harmonizes Ying and Wei, but he doesn't say Wei, scatters evils, adding Longu and Muli settles the liver and quiets the Hun. So, okay, so, so now if we think there's Hun disturbance, Longo and Muli, you know, instead of Long Chu and, and um, Mother of Pearl, we can use Longo and Muli to quiet the Hun. And when the liver, when everything's stored and secured, it's not easy for wind to enter. When the Hun dreams peacefully, there won't be seminal emission. Um, and if you give the wrong herbs, if you just think that's liver fire and you give Jirmu and Huang Bai, the patient will become deficient. I think this one is related. Yeah, this one is also dream emission. So let's do this and then I'll stop again for questions. This is by Wang Ji, who is this Ming Dynasty doctor that wrote a case study book. Someone was 30 something and his face looked emaciated. This was initially due because he had Cheng Han, he had cold damage, he had external cold invasion, and he sweat too much. It's not clear if he sweat because it became Yang Ming and he was sweating, or did they give him too much, you know, Ma Huang Tang and he sweat too much, but he sweat too much. So he looked emaciated. And after this, both feet were cold sometimes and his body didn't like cold. He easily felt hungry. Even when he ate, he still felt hungry, but he was getting more thin every day. He had frequent dream emissions. His sinews and bones were painful. He lay in bed for a long time and never went out. So doctors had tried to nourish yin and down their fire, but it didn't help. And so I, Wang Ji, I observed his left pulse was floating, deficient, and moderate. And the right was floating wiry and moderate. This was Yang deficiency, he says. And then he has a whole long thing. Apparently, other people thought it was yin deficiency, you know, and they used anti yin deficiency herbs. And he goes in this whole long thing about why is it Yang deficiency? Why isn't it yin deficiency? And I didn't translate that here because it, it's like not relevant to the twin. Um, in this case, when yang is already deficient, um, the jing qi of yang couldn't nourish the shen. The heart stores the shen. When the heart lost its nourishment, it fluttered, flying upward with lots of dreams. Yang's gentle qi could not nourish the sinews. The liver governs sinews and stores the huan. When the sinews lost their nourishment, all the sinews and bones became painful, and the huan was not stored, so his dreams were uneasy. So, of course, there were dream emissions. The classic says, when qi is secure, the physical body is solid. When there's yang deficiency, you can't be secure. So the jing gate fails in its duties. That means he's losing semen, seminal emission. The gate that holds the semen in is not staying closed. So this is why he had frequent emissions and incontinence of jing. Here's something strange and interesting. The classic says the kidneys are the gate of the stomach. And that's true. Su Wen chapter 61 says that. Um, but here, if we assist Yang to make it secure and nourish the stomach to guard the gate, he will not suffer incessant emissions. But that's weird because the kidneys are the gate, but he's saying to, to nourish the stomach to guard the gate. Um, so anyway. But it's weird to involve like the stomach in seminal emission. Um, so, so there's a question about pulse in there. Um, 
you know, there's this whole, he has this whole long explanation, which really goes off track. And I'm trying to focus on the one rather than just general pulse diagnosis. So again, it's like, we're only about halfway through the slides, but we're two thirds of the way through the talk. So I'm not going to talk about this pulse. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so he used um, ginseng and huang qi and baiju, which are three of the main ingredients of bujang yi qi tang, also gansao is in it. And then he added some other herbs. The patient took it for six months and it was modified depending on the season and the patient took care of himself and lived happily ever after. Okay. So do we have any Hun related questions at this point? Emily, is your hand up again or was that from before? No, it's up. Um, I was uh, just wondering I, if you could clarify, um, I think it was in case four, it says the Shen and the Hun drifted away and he wasn't conscious of anything. So can you just maybe explain a bit more? So when the Shen and the Hun have gone out or for example, in a dream, there's no consciousness in the body. What, do that, what does that mean? Um, I'd have to go back and see the exact sentence, but you know, if the Shen is like floating and drifting away, you're not going to have normal consciousness. Um, and what know, about, what about the Hun? If the Hun is out is, if the Hun is up in say the dream state, is the body not conscious? Yes. The body is in dreams. The body's not conscious really because you know you're in your dream state and your hun floating around and doing all these lovely dream things hopefully it's lovely dream things but um if you're in a trance state you're also not really very aware of your body right so you could be awake but in a trance state and that would be hun but you're not like living in your you're not embodying yourself you're like in some other plane of existence kind of and so maybe if you woke up suddenly or, for example, you wouldn't really, you could be disconnected from your hun? Yes, or only tenuously connected or out of body experience or like that person who was perceiving two bodies, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you'd have weird consciousness. Sure. Okay, um, thank you. And if it's prolonged, then it might be called mental illness. And some psychosis or mental illness may certainly have to do with this. But if it's just like a, you know, if it happens like during an illness and then you get over it, we probably wouldn't call it mental illness. Um, yeah. Jonathan has your hand up. Hey, Dr. Wilcox. Um, so I'm curious, is it, is it really the, the dream component that is the depreciation for um, the hoon lifting up versus um, other patterns, other liver, uh, other liver associated patterns. Like we're seeing where multiple doctors are coming up with multiple diagnoses. Like how would, what would lead us specifically say, oh, it's the hoon that's lifting up? Um, so, so, I mean, it, they've just many of them describe. Um, maybe we haven't gotten to that part yet, but we're going to see a number of them describe something floating in the air. Like one of them that's coming up um, sees some stuff floating in the air. Um, so maybe part of it is, you know, the kind of sensation, but even some of these people weren't even able really to talk and explain what they were perceiving. So how do these doctors know? In part, because the liver pulse, the pulse relates to the liver. Um, I don't know. I'm still data mining this and trying to absorb it. And so I'm not here to like tell you this is how it is i'm still working on it too so i don't have a coherent answer for you maybe because my hun is floating a bit or something uh maybe if i can gather it in i'd have a more coherent answer thank you um yeah anyone else okay here's the ninth case i hope you find these cases interesting anyway even if there's some questions, like, I hope you find this interesting. Okay, so some doctor that I don't even know who this is, 
but he's he's written about in Shuming Yi Lei'an, a Qing Dynasty case study book. Um, he treated someone else. Uh, oh, I like this story. The person had a felt shop. You know, felt is this kind of fabric. Um, and he resided in Hangzhou for a long time. His body was large and robust, and he had a special liking for hot guo. I don't know what guo is. I could find out it's some kind of noodle dish, um, but I couldn't really find out exactly what it is. So its nature is drying, and it stirred up his liver qi. He was over 50, and eventually he didn't sleep for six years. I assume that means he has insomnia. I, I doubt that anyone could stay alive and not sleep at all. But anyway, doctors had used a lot of herbs for phlegm and fire for qi and blood, but he wasn't better. So early one morning, this Dr. Qian diagnosed him. The tsun and the guan pulses were surging, floating, and forceful. His pulse felt solid as a sinew. It felt like they were feeling like a tendon rather than you know, a pulse, and both chur pulses were large. Um, oh, a meatball noodle soup, okay. I don't know if it's the same character, but anyway, yay. Um, okay, so Chen pondered it deeply. Using pulse theory, a person with a big body should have a deep pulse. In this case, though, the pulses were surging, floating and forceful, floating, not deep. Using symptom theory, the upper body, his, this guy's upper body didn't like heat, but his feet didn't like cold. And using herbal theory, he, they had already tried heat clearing and supplementing herbs, but they kept trying them and trying them and never got results. Um, oh, that was a direct message to me. Sorry, I was responding to a direct message and you didn't know what it said. So some kind of um, noodle soup has that word guo in its name. Okay. Um, so, so this, um, case continues and says, Nanjing, the classic of difficult issues says, in somebody with peaceful sleep, the Shen returns to the heart, the Po returns to the lungs, the Hun returns to the liver, and the Yi returns to the spleen, the Zhe returns to the kidneys. Actually, Nanjing doesn't say that at all. That's a fake quote, which you find a lot of fake quotes in the old books. They're kind of summarizing some idea and they're not really quoting, but they make it look like a quote. Anyway, each of the five spirits needs to return to its own organ to have peaceful sleep is what this is saying. To sleep, each should be peacefully installed in its proper position within the five yin organs. And further, night is yin, yin is stillness. Day is yang, yang is movement. So when yin and yang are harmonious, sleep and wakefulness are calm. He would, went six years without sleeping. That's very yang condition. So Chen realized that he had to drain the person's yang so that yin chi, you know, there was too much yang, so there's no room for yin. So when he drained all the yang, yin chi could return and then he could sleep. And so here to settle this sleep disturbance, he used da cheng chi tang, which is like, wow, you know, strong, clear heat, downward moving, inducing bowel movement, adding even extra da huang. <laughs> so you had more than 10 episodes of diarrhea and he became really out of it and slept for several days. Remember he couldn't sleep before. Now he slept for several days. When he woke up, he ate rice porridge and recovered. <laughs> So you can see a totally different strategy, da cheng chi tang. Okay, number 10. Uh, this is from some book that I'm not really familiar with. It's a very modern book. You know, that's at the end of the Qing dynasty. Anyway, patient. He says, in the spring, the pulse should be wiry, but this person's pulse was minute you know, really tiny. This was liver deficiency. The hun was not stored when the liver was deficient. So each season should have their seasonal pulses and everyone's pulse should be slightly more wiry in the spring. But since this person's pulse was minute, it's saying the wood element is just devastated. <laughs> um, and so because liver was deficient, hun is not stored. Um, and 
he couldn't sleep at night. People should stay awake in the daytime, but he slept in the daytime and he couldn't sleep at night. He was like <laughs> reverse in his sleep and wake cycles. And so now surprising, he says, this is stomach deficiency. We saw that before the other one with seminal emission was talking about stomach as well. The stomach is the young organ of, quote, two young uniting their brightness, which is uh, something from Suwen chapter 74. I don't really understand. I didn't want to, oh, Suwen chapter 74 is big and long, and I didn't want to really try to understand it. But the two young, I think, are the two young Ming channels. Um, and the young Ming channels are extra bright because they have abundant Qian blood. And so the stomach is, you know, one of these young Ming Fu that have this extra brightness. And when there's stomach deficiency, Yang Qi loses its brightness. So he was sleeping in the daytime. I supplemented the liver deficiency so it stored the Hun. And I boosted the stomach deficiency to supplement Qi. And then here's the formula, which you could look at you know, on your own, um, if you're interested in going back through the slideshow. Oh, so that's the end of that one. Okay, let's do one or two more and then I'll ask for questions again. Uh, this one is fun. Somebody named Joel was a farmer in the countryside and he had fever and chills. So, you know, external attack. He took a dose of herbs to release the exterior and then found himself in a trance-like state. Um, his fatigue increased each day. His eyes were blank as if he had become a fool. <laughs> um, his speech was confused. He moaned day and night and all of his pulses were slightly weak. And when the doctor tried to press hard during the pulse reading, it's like he couldn't stand the heavy pressure on pulse reading. So the doctor, I guess this is a Dr. V, said, great fright must have caused this. It harmed his Shen Qi. So there's the image of his Shen and Hun flying up. The Shen is stored in the heart and the heart governs staying calm. The Hun is stored in the liver and the liver governs becoming panic stricken. Now that's a new one, right? Oh, I never heard that. The liver governs becoming panic stricken, but it kind of makes sense to me. Thus, his chi became disordered when frightened. Su so Wen 39 says fright makes chi chaotic or fright makes chi disordered. And the heart lost its usual calm. So Shen Chi floated up unsupported and alone. And evils entered the cavern of Shen Ming, the cavern of spirit brightness, which is the heart. <laughs> um, because of this, his Hun had no peaceful residence and it drifted. His hun is just like drifting out there. If able to quiet the shen, boost chi and secure and conserve the true, um, you know, like his right chi and so forth, the true that was flying off, then the hun would naturally follow the shen and return to its duty of clear brightness. So he took Gui Tom and he became just as, as smart as he used to be. In his own words, then he said, after he could talk again and after his consciousness was more normal, he said, this disease most likely originated when he slipped and fell from a high place into a, a brook or a stream. Then when he fell into that stream, he felt his shen jump out of his body and the brilliance of his jing became unstable. It made his wandering hun appear in a detailed form, closely resembling his own body about the same height, sometimes walked about in the air. So he saw his hun that looked just like him walking about in the air. That's the hun flying up. He even saw it, although he couldn't tell the doctor until after he recovered. Um, so it sometimes walked about in the air and it's sometimes the hun sometimes lay in the same bed with him. Just like we saw earlier, there was this person who had two selves and he couldn't tell which was real and which was the Hun, which, you know, so this is the Hun leaving his body. This is really true. It's not false, <laughs> the case says. From then on, whenever he got a little angry or frightened, he would relapse because anger affects the liver. And then we just saw fright or panic 
also is associated with the liver, but he could recover every time he used grapey tongue. Okay, but that's not the end of the story. He later moved to the city. And while he was on, his, on the road, he met something in the form of a human. So this is not a human, but it's something that looked humanoid. <laughs> he met something in the form of a human on the road and received quite a fright from that. That evening, he started loudly shouting about killing people. The whole family was astonished and said, oh, let's go back to Guapi Tom. But I, the Dr. Lee, I went there directly and diagnosed his pulse again. It was wiry, strong, and contentious, indicating that it was quite different from the previous condition. It had been weak before, but now it was strong and wiry. Okay, so when he starts yelling about killing people, that's a, a different thing. This was an evil spirit that took advantage of right chi deficiency. Again, when the body's deficient, bad things can move in. Um, this was not the earlier deserting Shen and departing Hun. So the treatment, we should clear phlegm and down bear fire so the evil spirit cannot act. Um, if I use ginseng and huang qi, which were, you know, in the previous formula, it would stick to the evil qi, it would secure the evil qi, it would make the evil become deep rooted in the body. So this time he used wendan tang um, with some additions. And the guy took it and slept soundly. And when he woke up, the disease was gone, but he felt sluggish. So he ate some porridge and took care of himself and took guapi tongue again and lived happily ever after. <laughs> what do you think? Guy had a traumatic brain injury. Maybe when he fell, could be. Yeah. Could be. PTSD. Yeah. It's interesting the way they talk about it. Yeah, because they didn't have terms like traumatic brain oh. injury or PTSD. Yeah. So yeah, some of that could be related. Um, and remember like this yeah. panic being related to the liver and panic is one of the things that can happen in PTSD. Yeah. Yeah, what do you make of that with the panic being associated with the liver here? Um, well, bef so actually in Neijing, it says that, what does it say? I forget where, but it's, I think it says anger is excess of the liver and fright is deficiency of the liver. And fright and panic are closely associated. Okay. I always think of fright in the kidney. I know. And, and also fright is related to gallbladder deficiency. So Zhang Jiebin has this whole section in Neijing where he talks about, well, everybody says the five element thing where anger is liver, but anger can also be related to this condition and that condition. And, and you know, he goes over all the emotions and talks about how it's not quite so simple as just, you know, one on one five element correspondence. Is that in, uh, is that in Suwen? Uh, it's in Lei Jing, um, and I don't remember which part of Lei Jing, but I probably have a bookmark in that section. Um, so, okay. Is this anyone else? Okay, so I think we're going to go over. If anyone has to leave, the video will be available, but... Um, you know, unless you just want me to stop and not finish the slides, I think there are about 15 more slides. So I'm gonna keep going. And if you have to go, I understand. Okay, so <clears throat> case 12. Oh, Xu Ling Tai is really interesting person. He criticizes everyone and he acts like he's a big know-it-all. And it surprises me that he has um, this case. This case doesn't sound like him, but anyway, this is from Xu Ling Tai, a Qing dynasty doctor. Anyway, a son of the Jiang family somewhere suffered a seasonal condition. His body was hot and would not cool down. Um, and his shen was clouded, but his speech was placid. 
So he was kind of in a daze, but he wasn't agitated. Um, but he had a hot body, not that kind of hot body, okay? His body felt hot. Um, anyway, uh, his pulse was incoherent. It was like unexpected and it was not constant. It was like just random. So um, I diagnosed him and said, this is a condition of wandering Gun. Even if he takes herbs, we have to summon his horn and get it to come back to his body. We need to find a way to do that. A neighbor said, I've heard that if you pray devoutly to the kitchen god, then the kitchen god can help call the Huan back. So the father did what the neighbor said. And um, as a result, the patient you know, it starts to get better. And the patient said, this occurred because I was watching a play and a platform that the actors were on fell down and I was almost crushed and I received a big fright. You know, it's like, ah, this thing's falling on me. And he got frightened. So I then took a walk and went to the temple of the town god, but my hun stayed behind in the temple. So we need to have a sedan chair carry me back there. You know, the kind of like, chair that's on sticks and people, you know, carry it. Um, yeah. So he's obviously a rich guy. <laughs> Have a sedan chair carry me back there. The family went to summon it, as he said. And the next day, so they went back to the temple to find his hun. The next day they sent for me to diagnose him again. The patient said, my hun just arrived at my bedroom door, but my father bumped into it and scattered it. And then today, my hun lay on top of the quilt with me, but my mother came and made the bed and it fell off. And now I don't know where it is. He raged endlessly. I just picture like a teenager having like a fit, you know, complaining about his parents. His father bumped his hun and his mother made his bed. Oh. <laughs> I consoled him by saying, don't worry, I'll return it to you now. And I used herbs to quiet the shen and settle the pool, plus the tip of a pork heart. I wrapped cinnabar in deep red silk and suspended it in the herb pot. So you can see again, he's boiling cinnabar with the herbs. It was boiled and he took it. I warned the family, he should take the herbs and sleep. Don't startle him, don't awaken him. When he sleeps soundly, the shen will join. Well, I thought it was the hun that was gone, but that's what it says. The shen will join. The result was that he was peaceful after one dose. He took care of himself and recovered. So I asked him, tell me more about this, but he didn't remember or didn't know anything more. Okay. Um, so is this overwhelming too many cases? Well, you can get the slideshow and look at them more slowly if you want. So here's a really ancient case from, you know, the sixth century. Treated Somebody treated someone who liked wine and sex too much. That person fell into a daze sometimes. And he said every time he fell into a daze, he initially sees a five-colored thing in the air. It gradually comes nearer and morphs into a beautiful woman. She stands gracefully several meters above the ground. So this Dr. Shu said, this is excessive sexual desire. <laughs> it resulted in great deficiency. And he gave Wu a decoction. Um, after one dose, Wu felt that she was a little bit more distant. And after second dose, she changed back into the five colored thing. And then Wu recovered after several doses. So again, here's something does this even use the word hun? I don't think it uses the word hun, but here's something floating up in the air, which is kind of a, a clue that hun and or shen are floating and not anchored. Okay, so that's, there's one more case at the very end, but um, any questions or comments? There's a link for acupuncturists without borders in the chat, please. Um, Donate to them if you can afford, or somebody. Donate to somebody. Do some good. <laughs> yeah. OK. So I don't know. Uh, it's getting late, and these are just more 
quotes from like Jibing Yuan Ho Lun, which um, I talked about a little bit in the beginning. Does this say anything? You know, the Huan and Po are wandering outside, arrested by evils. So the evils are like preventing it from returning. The victim wants to return, but cannot. And so then there's ghost oppression. He's quoting from um, Joho Beji Fang. Um, and there's some stuff we talked about when we talked about ghost oppressive dreams about being careful about turning on the light if it was dark because that'll somehow startle the Huan away. Um, but if the light was already on, you can leave it on. And don't like call loudly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Come back, come back, because that also will kind of scare it away or something like that. So you can call out to the victim, but not real close and not real loud and not real urgently. Um, and they mention using medical or occult formulas to treat. And asleep, the one meets things. Awake, the body operates. We saw that at the very first slide. The form of these things seems to be terrifying. Heart chi is chaotic. Ghost evil chi takes advantage of deficiency and enters the victim during sleep. The victims hun and po fly away, leaving their body. And so they can't awaken and can even die. Okay, so there's a little bit about treatment here. Um, if you downloaded the slide show before today, um, those of you at Emperor's College, I changed this slide a lot, so please re-download it. I put it back up. But if you're going to get it, when I I'll put it up at um, Academia in you know as soon as we're done with class, and then you'll have the correct one. So there's this you know practice of putting your thumb inside your fist, and you're supposed to practice that all the time. And when you go to sleep, sleep like this, and then that will prevent um, you know, that's controlling the Huan gate and the Po door, preventing them from leaving and preventing ghost evils from coming in. Oh, there's something in chat. What does it say? Oh, it's direct to me. I'll read it later. Um, okay. So, uh, Yeah, um, there's uh, this herb zhao jia or zhao jiao. It has it's called different names that you can blow into the nose, and then it makes them sneeze, and that will raise the dead and return them to life. <laughs> so the very last thing, there's one last case, and then I'll stop talking. Um, so this is also from Chuming Yi Lei An. Um, somebody named Liu treated an unmarried girl from a wealthy family. She was combing her hair and was about to start washing up when she suddenly saw two women trying to grab her. She ran away to escape, but they squeezed around her. She shouted loudly, and after shouting, she cried loudly. When she stopped crying, she became manic, and she also had alternating fever and chills, dizziness, and insomnia. Everybody thought it was a ghost or an evil spirit that attacked her. So they called a shaman to make talismans and perform incantations, but it became even worse. So Liu came and diagnosed her. Her lung pulse went straight up to lung 10. Um, and the liver pulse was also doubly wiry. So this is a whole thing. This pulse is a very specific pulse that was attributed to unmarried girls or women. So like nuns or widows or young girls, but teenage before they got married. And because they didn't have a man, <laughs> then they had certain pathology. And one of the symptoms of not having a man was the pulse. It was extra long going up to the lung 10 region and wiry. Remember, she's an unmarried girl, they already said. And so Liu knew that she had seen her own Huan and Po. Remember, two women had tried to grab her. One 
woman was the hun and the other woman was the po. The lung store, the hun, and the liver store is the po. Well, he's got that opposite, but that's like what the book says. So that's an ancient typo. It should be the lung store, the po, and the liver store is the hun. So we use Xiao Chai Hu Tang um, with some adjustments, Longu and Mu Li, which we've seen a couple of times to anchor things. Um, to clear the lungs and liver, settle fright and timidity and one dose and she was fine. So note that first she shouted and then she cried and shouting is the sound of the liver and crying is the sound of the lungs. And so part of the diagnosis was first she shouted and then she cried. So that's basically um, my slideshow. So I'll take more questions, but I want to, I do want to, I don't want to forget to thank Eric Darvish for setting this up and, you know, doing all kinds of coordination work and for inspiring me to do these talks and, and for, um, you know, emceeing this or whatever, however you want to say that. Also, thanks to Emperor's College for letting us use your Zoom. Thanks to all of you. And I did have a bit of translation help from Leo Locke, who's not here today, but he's like wonderful. So, um, okay. So, uh, so, so I'm, I'm done. What questions do you have? Or comments or hi yeah so one question is so do you think a Tourette syndrome could be a ghost possession i think it could i mean of course i never like to say this thing in biomedicine is that thing in chinese oh. medicine but i think that in the differential diagnosis this could be part of it yeah Anyone else? Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm getting some thanks in chat. Some of them are direct message. So yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you for, you know, playing with this, <laughs> these ideas. It's the kind of stuff we don't get in our everyday classes at school. So yeah, I really like to be grounded in what the books say and not just like make up stuff based on new age ideas. <laughs> um, I, I, if it works in clinic, that's great, but like I like to find the roots of things. So that's what I was doing. I hope you can use this in your research in your clinic to maybe come up with some ideas in treating sleep disturbances or mental illness or, or various kinds of things. Yeah. Thank you, this was great. Good, I'm glad. Should I stop recording? Is there any question that somebody wants to have still on tape? Okay, I'm gonna stop recording if I can figure out how. <laughs>